Happy Wednesday, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Oasis Community Calls. I'm your host, Mikna, Community Lead at Oasis Network, and we have a very exciting show lined up for you today. Uh, first of all, I'd like to apologize for keeping our cameras turned off, but uh, due to Discord limitations, we need to do this, otherwise we'll be limiting the number of participants. So, okay, let's get started. Today we'll be diving into the world of Web3 privacy, uh, TEs, and exploring the remarkable work of Enshrine Computing. Our special guest today is one of the most brilliant people I have ever met, uh, Nick Hines, uh, the actual founder of Enshrine Computing and uh, currently an ecosystem growth advisor at Oasis Foundation. So, thank you very much for joining us today, Nick. And before we we'll dive into Enshrine Computing, could you tell us a bit more about how your journey with OVC started? Like, uh, what caught your eye and made you decide, like, this is a path I want to follow? Yeah, great question. So first of all, I'm really glad to be here with the Oasis community. It's just been uh, a really great time to have been working uh, on this project on the Oasis ecosystem, and I'm really excited for all the things that we're all going to build together. So in terms of the what caught my head at Oasis, like it started when I realized that immense potential that privacy preserving decentralized technologies held. I was intrigued by the concept of being able to balance the need for shared beneficial computation with the preservation of individual privacy. It was this unique blend of trust, privacy, and scalability in the Oasis blockchain design that made me decide this is the path I want to follow. So the notion of on-chain and self-sovereign code and the possibilities it can open up if extended to the off-chain world was the beginning of my exploration towards autonomous computing. That's, that's amazing, Nick. And like I know, both we and the audience care a lot about privacy and web free privacy in particular. Um, but yeah, now that we know a bit more about how your journey with Oasis started, uh, I'd like to shift the focus to Enfram Computing, the company you founded. Like, what, what what inspired you to start Enfram Computing, and um, what was a, a particular need or problem that you detected, and for which Enfram is the answer? Mm -hmm. So the inspiration to start Enfram Computing came from the realization that smart contracts were limited in their ability to interact with private off-chain data. I saw a gap in the Web3 environment that could be bridged by autonomous computing, essentially giving blockchain control to off-chain agents privacy and a life of their own. The motivation was to unlock the potential of data marketplaces, self-sovereign AI, trustworthy web services, and ethical personalizations, uh, which were all hampered by the lack of privacy in data transfers uh, via Oracle and just overall um, the way that on-chain services works. And we have the ability through protocols like Oasis to be the basis for an off-chain um, autonomous system. So that's what we're uh, out here building. <laughs> nice. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm sure this will be a game changer. And uh, like within game changers and revolutions, I, I'm sure we faced a lot of challenges so far. And maybe in the implementation process or even in the reaction of the community towards your product. Like, could you tell us a bit more about that? <laughs> yeah, good, good, good for asking. Actually, indeed, the path of building the autonomous computing platform, it's been pretty challenging. So the first hurdle was the overall technical complexity of integrating blockchain with off-chain data while preserving privacy. Uh, in the past, we've tried similar things at Oasis, like through Oasis Parcel, and in some sense, this is the spiritual successor to Parcel, although it's completely different. And then after that, there's also the challenge of educating like, users in the wider community about the potential and operations of autonomous computing, since it's such a new concept. It's so new that I've even taken a calling at Web4, the web of humans and AI. But we'll get to that later anyway. These difficulties are what made the journey rewarding, though, as we strive to make the benefits of autonomous computing accessible to all. I'm sure. I'm sure that's the case, and you'll see plenty of rewards along the way. Like this would be a fruitful uh, endeavor. Um, I, I kind of found the blockchain interaction with off-chain data subject uh, very interesting, and that's because I, I care about off-chain data. I, I dabble with the data center in the past. Uh, could you tell us like what the limitations of smart contracts interacting with private off-chain data data are? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so the first limitation is, of course, like the on-chain world is just entirely on-chain, and you need some third party to go and access the off-chain data and either put it on-chain or like do some operation off-chain. And then usually what you have is that on-chain data is very expensive, although very high integrity. And you can also do privacy if you're using a network like Oasis that provides on-chain privacy. But in general, the kinds of operations you want to do privately on data. It's going to be very intensive. The data is going to be very big. So you're doing things like medical analysis, um, machine learning training or inference, or um, just managing like policies and data centers even. But like these kinds of things are like interactions with the real world that require um, both a third party off chain to like, interact with the data physically and also uh, you want these this agent to have privacy as well. So traditionally, what you do is take an oracle, like uh, I mean, like your favorite chain link, right? And then you would send messages to interact with it. And like chain link has their own uh, SGX ish kind of thing, but it's like not super general purpose. And it has the decentralized oracle network, which doesn't really play so nicely with TEE. I can get more into that, but um, yeah, basically the idea is that if you have autonomous computing, then you have a trustworthy third party to go and reach into the real world as a smart contract and mess with the data that you needed to. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, it, it actually makes a lot of sense now. Uh, and I heard you talk about these. Uh, so I know this is the hot topic at the moment or a delicate subject for some, but uh, I'd really like to know what made you choose these versus uh, ZQPs. <laughs> ZKP. Wow, I've never heard it said that way before. But that's cool. I like I like the. That must be like the the you know the BRC the BRP received pronunciation. Anyway, the um so yeah the decision to use TE over ZKP is primarily a pragmatic one. TE provides a good balance of security and performance, making them well suited for securing uh, things like autonomous AI and more uh, I guess mundane but still very useful things like data marketplaces and uh, and like. Uh, MEV extraction and, and sorts of things. And then the offer strong so the what I care about mostly is that they offer strong protection for AI models even in hostile environments. And you just can't do that with ZKP because these but like you need way too much computation. So there's like a lot of work being done to make ZK faster, but I, it's my opinion that it's gonna hit a wall um in much the same way that like homework encryption has. Like it's I mean homework encryption's got like like what thousands or hundreds of thousands times faster, but it's like still not super fast. And the, the cutting edge of AI is always going to be on the like the far end of what's able to be supported in these sorts of more mathematical constructs. So the yeah, so again, the, just the choice of TEE is because TEE is very practical. And then um, the what we're building on the S screen. Uh, task running environment is actually built so that uh, the common complaint that people have about TEE, which is like, oh, your TEE is like in your enemy's hands, like they're going to like break your TEE. And like, that's like valid for like these low trust environments, like the one Oasis Network operates in. But it's not always true. You can just say that you don't want your TEEs, uh, so, or sorry, your job scheduled on like risky TEE in like some cloud you don't trust, right? So like you do have that ability once you go off chain to have more customizability over what hardware you're actually using. That's another big part of it. Yeah, 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 makes sense, of course. Um, I'm particularly interested about your <laughs> demo sort of project currently going on, and I'm sure uh, most of our community members are already familiar with it, but uh, for who isn't familiar with it, um, I'm sure they would be eager to learn more about uh, NFT Trout. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about that and like how did you come up with the idea like why, why trials and not something else like let's say killer robots? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you see, uh, well, pro robots are difficult, but anyway, Anna Trout is our, um, so for those of you not aware, it's our flagship ship tech demo. It's just a tech demo of the overall system, and it's an intriguing embodiment of the potential of autonomous computing, since it's a game where trouts, like these little fish, interact with their, each of the unique secret genes, only known to the game, breed autonomously within a computing, an autonomous computing environment. So it's just like CryptoKitties, except if CryptoKitties were actually like secure and they couldn't, for instance, like manually assign a rare cat to one of their friends or something like that. And then it ensures, because all of the breeding happens within autonomous computing environment and the genes are secret and protected using keys 
uh, stored on the Oasis blockchain, it ensures total unpredictability and uniqueness of each trout while making the breeding process impervious to external influence or manipulation. So in the choice of trouts over something else like killer robots is essentially to provide a more friendly, whimsical, and accessible experience to our users. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I admit I have a couple of trout myself, so I, I urge everyone to <laughs> to breed some trout, <laughs> and uh, you'll get the chance to to chat with Nick as well. <laughs> um, there was a question from our community that was highly asked: uh, is uh, how Entron differentiates itself from other projects trying to build autonomous AI projects on blockchain? Like, what makes it unique? And trying computing stands apart in the realm of autonomous AI projects on blockchain through its focus on privacy preserving off chain interactions. Okay. While other projects may focus on on chain activities, we aim to bridge the gap between on chain and off chain operations by enabling smart contracts to interact with private off chain data securely. Okay. So if you see other things going on, like the ZK, sorry, the ZK AI, uh, projects trying to like merge those two things those are mainly about like scalability a little bit less on privacy and, and not really focused on the specific interaction with like off-chain data off-chain ml like ai model training inference and just like basically data data uh, rights for users and then what we're doing at Entrain Computing is it unlocks new possibilities such as this data marketplace and self-sovereign AI that we care about so much and it extends the capabilities of Web3 into something that I've been calling Web4 where you just have uh, all sorts of, like you have, you have people, you have their data, you have their AI and like everyone's interacting on the same like network and like eventually the web is going to become so full with like AI generated content that you're just going to have to, with of course the help of your own personalized AI, evaluate all of the different data that's coming at you. And really autonomous computing is the environment in which you're going to run these things so that you can uh, ensure that you're not like, like essentially giving away uh, to your data, you're be able to monetize things. It gives you the choice when you enter this new world of um, like uh, online freedom. Okay, but like uh, my my take on this is that uh, the full potential of Web three itself has yet to be unlocked. Uh, I think we still have a, a long way to go. Um, do you think that Web four, like your concept of Web four, is is gonna explode in the near future? Like, yeah, for, I think that's what, yeah, Web3, it's not, I don't think Web3 hasn't really taken off. I think that Web3 really is huge. It's just the very niche thing, right? So, like, you have people managing, like, billions of dollars very cheaply and securely on chain, and that's, like, fantastic. Just that uh, a lot of people don't really have billions of dollars lying around. I mean, if you do, like, let me know. I'm glad to help you with that. But... <laughs> Really, the Web 4 is like, it's not Web 5, which we've been hearing this thing of like Web 2 plus Web 3, where like, I don't know how you really combine those, but it's like, Web 4 is this entirely new thing. It's just, it just seems like the inevitable evolution of the internet, given the growing prominence of AI in our digital lives. So, while we're still uh, exploring the full potential of Web 3, we need a way for secure for autonomous agents to basically exist as their own independent entities in like this new web, and we're going to need to give them a secure and private way to do that, and of course smart contracts are already autonomous, so we're just extending the utility of Web3 into Web4, so it's not like Web4 is replacing Web3, it's just that Web4 is like a sort of different evolution of Web3 in a way that makes it more appealing to like the mass market. So like ChatGPT, it got like a billion users in like two days, and like Web3 is still at a few hundred million. So Web4 is really what I see as the, what the killer app for autonom these autonomous agents on chain, but in a way that can be used by, the, by just regular people. Yeah, and I think that this is one of the most important things in, uh, in blockchain at the moment, like user experience and uh, mass user adoption. <laughs> because as you said, like, yeah, ChatGPT uh, rounded up more, more users and <laughs> blockchain and web3 um, and, and speaking about the future like what, what other use cases would you like to further explore with them friend like um, could you share with us any exciting upcoming developments or like projects that train computing has in the pipeline yeah we actually so have some products across the web4 or web3 ecosystem um 
actually mainly focus specifically on decentralized because like they like really understand privacy. So we got things like fine arts, healthcare, programming, and other things like that. So we believe overall that autonomous computing has a broad range of applications that can benefit various disciplines and and just overall help us understand the universe of possibilities better. And then as for specific projects, um, we're right now building a screen the self-hostable autonomous computing network. And uh, we're actually going to launch a playable demo uh, coming soon. I mean, there's always NF Trout. So uh, screen NF Trout and then all these different things like the art, healthcare, and uh, we're going to be brought on board as, well, hopefully very soon. So I hope that you'll stay tuned for our updates there. Uh, I, for one, will stay very tuned to our community wheel as well. And, and speaking about that, like, where can people find you and follow your project? Uh, for those that don't know already. Well, in fact, uh, all of you listening, uh, I guess those of you listening live, are already on the best platform, it's Discord. So if we actually have an active community of, of watchers, crowd holders, and contributors, and it's just a fun place that um, we can uh, talk about things like AI, updates, uh, technical stuff. But if you want to have a more low-noise channel, there's always... Twitter that holds the most important updates, and of course, if you're a dev, everything's available on GitHub. But if you have any questions, the best place for that is, of course, the Discord. Perfect. <laughs> um, so, for a final question, like, is there anything I didn't ask you that I should have asked you? <laughs> I know this is the <laughs> <laughs> hard question. All right now, this is okay. Here, this is don't. This is going to be a little bit controversial, potentially. But you could have asked whether the secure and computing environments we're building are for us or the AI is running in them. Because you know I've been talking about the whole AI angle a lot. And if I were going to answer that, it's actually it's entirely for the AI, but it's incredibly useful for humans if their computer helpers are trustworthy and can therefore provide a highly personalized experience without you just becoming a trained data generator for Microsoft model of your wallet, right? So like if you're just using Microsoft's free personal assistant, eventually you don't really need you, need you anymore and you just buy whatever they show you. Or I guess whatever whatever dystopia you choose to imagine, that's my preferred one. But anyway, it's also a self satisfying result to have free as in freedom autonomous AI. So that's yeah, that's what we're doing. We're bridging the privacy gap from humans to AI through secure decentralized computing and and then part of that is, oh well, a large part of the back end for that is the Oasis network. Uh, well, thank you for that. Yeah, I, I, I didn't think of, of that question, but uh, thank you for answering. Um, and I know personally, I would love if you could join us in, uh, in Paris. Like, I would like to further discuss this. Maybe we can do a panel around it. And for those of you who don't know, ECC Paris is coming up in July. We're going to be there. Uh, we're going to have our own side event on uh, July the 19th. Uh, we already have a, a lot of registration, so if you haven't registered already, uh, I urge everyone to do it. You can find the, the registration link in our Discord in the event section. Uh, you can come meet us in person. There's going to be a lot of team members from Oasis there. Um, and of course, uh, for those of you who want to build on Oasis, we have a hackathon coming up. It's going to be a huge one. Uh, it's going to be uh, organized by DevPost and hosted by DevPost. So we're going to have a lot of participants. So I urge everyone to build on Sapphire. Uh, use OPL, uh, which is live now. Um, so yeah. Uh, thank you everyone for attending. Thank you Nick so much for joining us. Uh, this is only the beginning for Discord community calls, uh, the first one. We're going to have a lot more in the future. We're going to invite ecosystem projects. We're going to meet uh, members from our team, core team members. Uh, and yeah, we'll try to make it as fun as possible for all of you attending. So thank you again, everyone. Thanks, Mia. This is great. I'm looking forward to listening to the next community calls. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Thank you, Nick. Bye, everyone.